But more thought now about these very unfortunate events. Let's uh, talk to radio host and author Stephen Lenman. He's joining us on the line from Chicago. Mr. Lenman, hi there. Thanks for being on our team. Hey, as these awful events unfold, I know you're watching your side of the pond as well. And we've already heard unconfirmed claims by that group calling themselves the helpers of the global jihad that this attack is a direct response to the presence of Norwegian forces in Afghanistan. Do you think that sounds like a realistic claim, a realistic theory? Kevin, I have written on numerous events, numerous individuals falsely charged, numerous official stories changed by later evidence. Can I give you some examples, both in America and Europe, both World Trade Center bombings in America, we know about 9-11, the evidence is overwhelming that the 9-11 attack itself was a false flag. Most people forget about the 1993 bombing. Mm -hmm. uh, a number of people were convicted. Uh, I wrote about one, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, the so-called blind Sheikh. He was completely innocent. He got life in prison. He was a former CIA asset. They brought him to America. The Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, Terry Nichols, Timothy McVeigh, a truck bomb in front of the uh, federal building in Oklahoma City. It was later proved that the truck bomb did relatively minor damage. Most of the damage came from internally rigged explosives. Okay, I mean, we, we've heard the conspiracy theories about 9-11 before, and I've taken everything you say there. So, I mean, what are you saying about what's happened here tonight? I mean, details are still very, very sketchy, and, I've, you know, uh, this, this is happening as people are still under the, under the ruins there tonight. So what do you think has gone on then? Well, of course, uh, the event just happened today. We have no way of knowing, and it, it could be days, it could be weeks before we know anything. But my advice to viewers is, always be suspicious especially about a major attack i'm sure your viewers remember the uh the underground bombing in london the madrid train bombing i believe uh the year before or the year after uh the mid the mid 2000s uh the the early stories were all wrong uh the latest stories conflicted with them presented different evidence and it looked like both of those events were false flags so again, we don't know what happened today. I'd be very suspicious. And there are clues, Kevin. There are clues. Let's see how fast information comes out. Let's see if people are charged. Let's see exactly what is said. And if too much official information is reported too fast, those are red flags. Okay. Because any event like this could take weeks, maybe months, to really find out what went on. If in the next day or two or a week, we get flooded with information and names named, those those are red flags that something is very, very wrong. Stephen, you know, I take in absolutely everything you say, treat with caution, absolutely understand that. But let's try and focus on uh, what some of the more mainstream theories may be about what could have happened here tonight. I mean, the claim also uh, by this group uh, mentions insults to the Prophet Muhammad, which were reprinted in a Norwegian tabloid last year. Could that have anything to do with it, do you think? Oh, it's possible, and I remember about that, and I mentioned it in an article that I wrote, but that, that's an old story. Why would somebody resurrect that now? A more recent one would well, be because the fact I still had a grudge to bear, I guess. Well, there are lots of reasons people have grudges to bear, but I would, I would suggest there are lots bigger reasons than the tabloid newspaper, and the newspaper wasn't struck. Uh, I'm not certain how close the bombing was to it, but they struck government buildings. Now, it didn't harm the prime minister. There were some people killed. They may, I'm sure other people were injured. Uh, the fact that Norway was part of the Libya co the NATO coalition mm -hmm. against Libya, that might have been a bigger reason. But remember, Norway pulled out of the coalition. Why wasn't Denmark attacked? And the former prime minister, Rasmussen, is a NATO Secretary General. Just 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 raging for more bombing, more wars. If that was a reason, attack Denmark, not Norway. Mm. Norway is a peaceful country. Why go after them? Well one reason may be to to incite fear, to make people believe that 
Even peaceful countries are attacked by these terrorists. Well, did, did terrorists really do this? Or was it a false flag to let's incite fear? Let's recall back, Stephen, to the end of last year. Police in Belgium, the Netherlands and Germany then arrested 26 suspected terrorists with links to Chechen militants. Now, thinking about then, wasn't this a big warning? I guess the terrorists had spread deep into Europe and to the north. Uh... I remember those incidents uh, a little bit. I remember others that took place in Denmark, in the UK, and I especially remember the UK and Denmark. Later information came out that conflicted with the original stories. Uh, I wrote about them, but it's been a good while since I've done it, and I don't remember the specific details. But what I do remember was the later evidence proved the early reports were falsified which again, I say, be very suspicious this time. No matter how you look at it, Stephen, tonight uh, people are going to be regarding Northern Europe, Norway in particular, as a less safe place than it uh, was traditionally considered to be, aren't they? Well, they certainly are. All the more reason to uh, continue the war in Afghanistan, uh, the uh, new wars that, uh, that uh, NATO countries are involved in uh, against Yemen, against Somalia, of course, the Libya operation going on. It's a good reason to say, well, these Muslim terrorists, uh, they'll go after anybody. They'll do it in their own countries. They'll do it in America. They'll do it across Europe. If we, if we don't target these people and get rid of them, they'll keep inciting these incidents and killing innocent people. And the trouble is, Kevin, that people in countries, especially in America, believe this, when in fact, I know for a fact, the stories I've written about, the innocent people charged in America, I've written about dozens of them, falsely charged, all of them Muslims, mostly men, occasionally a woman. I've written about at least five dozen of them. I have yet to find a single guilty person of any crime. But they're all in prison, some of them serving life terms, the public is traumatized, and the imperial wars go on. These are scandalous. It's a core topic for me I deal with all the time. OK. Stephen Lemon, I know you've always got uh, your very particular views about things, sometimes a little offbeat, but very much worth listening to as well. Stephen Lemon, uh, thank you for joining us very much tonight from Chicago.